Hi, and welcome to another edition of Wolfpack Sports TV. Today we'll be covering club women's soccer. I'm your commentator, James Thomas, and uh, Wolfpack will be taking on the North Carolina Tar Heels. This is the first game of a back-to-back uh, -to -back today. Um, later, um, uh, NC State will be taking on Duke. And... Uh, we're just underway here. NC State. A oh, little back and forth play right here. But it looks like both teams are coming out with a standard 4-4-2. Usually we see a, a quicker style soccer from women's than the than, than men. But uh, possession is still going to be key for Wolfpack today to get some good scoring opportunities. I see a clearance here by defender number 23. That's Leon Davis. Usually the center back is the anchor of a defense, so Davis will have to have a good game to keep a clean sheet for the Wolfpack today. In net for the Tar Heels is number 8. And here we go, Wolfpack on the offense. This one will come out to the left winger, Carter. Carter will take it. One touch shot. Almost uh, uh, scoring opportunity there for the Wolfpack, but shot's just too wide. And that's the striker for NC State, number seven, Logan Hurley. And it looks like the two strikers are playing a little bit staggered, so it's almost like a... Four, two, three, one for the Wolfpack. The goal kick will come out to center field, controlled there by number 14 for NC State. That's Natalie McDonald. But Carolina will take control again. And the goalie will look to clear her lines. This is an early morning game. Uh, game time is about 10 o'clock. So it's, uh, it'll be the first game of the day. Weather is a little bit cold. Um, it was definitely colder about two hours ago. And we expected it to warm up a little bit. And although that doesn't really affect playing conditions too much, it, it will affect the players, and and uh, and the touches might not be as clean. Some of the, your fingers and toes get a little bit frozen up, and and the ball seems to just kind of bounce off your foot instead of driving the ball on a pass. Carolina on the attack now, a through ball, slicing towards the corner, and it'll trickle out of bounds for an NC State goal kick. Back in net today for the Wolfpack. It looks like we're gonna have a, a, a an Belfield. Belfield will do her best to keep the Tar Heels off the scoreboard today. Unfortunately, we do not have a roster for North Carolina. So I'll just be referring to the Tar Heels as the team in blue or North Carolina. A low clearance there by Belleville. That comes off of NC State defender Shin now to play for a, a throw in. So far, we've seen neither team really possess the ball more than three or four possession passes. Carolina controlling it down in the attacking third now, patiently, waiting for a pass. This ball comes off of NC State Shin once again and out of play for another Tar Heel throw in. Carolina on the attack now. Pass broken up by the NC State defense, but Carolina will regain control again. Marching down the field, pass. Is it errant, and NC State will look to clear it out now. 
header clearance there by the center midfielder. The pass comes out to number seven for NC State. But Carolina looks to clear it away again. Nice switch here, slow down the pace and change the attack. That's number one, Princey State. That's Boland. Cooper with it now. A long lob pass out to number 13, Carter. Carter will take it, cut in, centering pass. Just too high, and it'll end up in on top of the net. Well, that's about the second time we've seen Carter make that run, and, and that pass comes from behind. It's just a lob pass over the top, and Carter is has loads of space around around that left wing, and she she's doing a good job of um, finding good balls down that left-hand side. It's just the final pass has been a little off so far. She hasn't been able to find the correct scoring opportunity. NC State regains the control of the ball. But that's number seven, Hurley with an errant pass and it'll become a Tar Heel throw in. Through pass here for NC State. Carter pulls it back. Good possession play here by NC State, but broken up by North Carolina. Finally, the ball comes out to number seven for NC State. Hurley pressures the defense, but momentarily in Carolina seems to be cleared away. Carter with the back pass. And NC State slows it down once again. Although no team has really got a stranglehold on the momentum of the game yet, it does feel like NC State is capable of making uh, a long possession where they connect 10 or 12 passes together. Centering pass here, shot on goal, and it's a score! NC State, with about five minutes or, or somewhere in between five and ten minutes into the game, that is going to be a goal netted by number 13, uh, Mar Mary Car Katie Carter. And I'm not sure who that was assisted by. That might have been Hurley on the assist right there. But nevertheless, NC State finds himself up 1-0. And that's very crucial for NC State to go up by one here because in tournament play it's really about dictating the um, tempo of the game and now NC State can play a lot more possessive um, obviously they don't want to get too complacent with the score however now they can pull it back and force Carolina to defend although Carolina on a nice attack right here this through ball will come too far out A little bit of a miscommunication there from the NC State defense. It looked like number one, Bolin, was trying to clear it to her center midfielders, but the midfielders weren't tracking back far enough. However, Carolina just cleared it away, and it'll fall out to a goal kick for Belfillville. Belfillville with the kick. A low kick once again. Flicked away by Carter. Opportunity here for the Tar Heels. And it's snuffed out by the NC State defense. Cleared away up towards Hurley. And Carolina will momentarily take over. NC State down the right wing, looking for a centering pass. And Carolina with a 
very last second clearance right there will give up an NC State corner kick. So this is the first corner kick for NC State that we've seen today. Looks like it'll be taken by number nine, Penley Crawford. And NC State will fit about five bodies in the box. And Carolina will commit all ten and even the 11th defender tracking back now. High kick curling in. And cleared away by Carolina. Second ball comes to NC State. Pulled back out for possession. Long lob pass towards the heart of the Carolina defense. Find its way out towards the right wing. Poked away by NC State. And it'll be a Carolina goal kick. Substitutions coming now on for the North Carolina Tar Heels. We'll have three substitutions. It looks like all three will be along the midfield. And it's important in tournament play to have a, a deep roster because you will be playing a back-to-back. -back. So fresh legs are very important. A lot of times you'll see a lot of cramps in the second game. Injuries become a factor. As a former player, it's... Um, Tournament style on, on a Saturday and Sunday is very familiar to me. Goal kick controlled by NC State. Hurley chase it down the right wing. Hurley's done a good job of playing sideline to sideline. Really helping out here in midfield. And, and, and that's really key. She takes away his space and uh, gives her midfielders options to pass forward. We've seen Carter make good runs down the left side. A throw in here by NC State along the far side. Looks like it'll come off a of NC State shin. Look for a cross there by NC State. But it'll be Carolina's ball in the form of a goal kick. Tar Heels to clear the lines. Ball comes up towards midfield. Through ball. Comes out to the right side of two. Carter will keep it in the near sidelines. Air at touch there by number one for NC State. Almost led to a costly mistake. That's Amanda Bowen. Carolina will take a throw in and the attacking third. Carter heads it away, and it'll be the first corner kick for Carolina. Carolina hasn't had too many quality opportunities quite yet, but certainly when you can put a ball in a dangerous area on a corner kick, anything can happen. Number 40 to Carolina to take it in. High swinging ball, head level, headed it on goal but it looked like it was deflected away. It might have been Carter to deflect it. Carolina will go for a throw in now. NC State to clear it away. Comes off of Carolina's shin. And a nice hustle play there by the Tar Heels to gain a throw in. Centering pass and no one home. Tapped on toward Carter. Carter will find her sitting in midfielder. Good run here. Bowling to take the throw in. Throws it down the line. And our first substitution for NC State will be, it looks like Hurley will come out. And I can't see the number on the new attacker. But a new striker for NC State nonetheless. And we'll restart play.
Maggie Reef with the errant pass out of bounds, and it'll be a blue throw in. A little bit of gamesmanship by Bolin right there. Ball straight up, hit it on by NC State. Controlled down by 22. That's the new striker that came on for Hurley. That's Shelly Cowan. Out of play for NC State. Or Carolina throw in. Carolina with touch passes. Can't connect them, and NC State will go for a throw in. So the standard for half for a soccer is usually 45 minutes. However, tournament play rules can be a little bit different sometimes. And I'm not sure if we're in 40-minute halves or if we are playing 45s. However, it does seem like in the first half of the first half, NC State, with the lead and most of the possession, has really controlled the tempo and the possession of, of this game thus far. Carter with the pass out on the left wing, but NC's pull, NC State pulls it back. Bowling looking for a through ball, it's snuffed out by the Carolina defense. And it's really a tough place to play. Bowling's a, a left back, and usually you like your center midfielders who have a, a more quality touch to control those passes. and. It was just too many bodies for Bolin to find a, a, a clean passing lane there. Carolina with the possession now. Pass down the middle of the field. Through ball. There's nobody home once again. And it'll fall off to Belfelf for... A goal kick to the red side. Belfield with the clearance. This one a little bit higher than their previous two. Bad decision there by the center back for NC State to cut it back where Carolina was coming and it, the Tar Heels retained possession looking for a, a cross right here it's in on the NC State defense and deflected ball which just barely not go out of bounds and then takes a deflection off of a Carolina attacker and will finally go out of play for a NC State goal kick Belfeville with the goal kick. Come out to the NC State defense. Popped around and nobody really has possession right now. Finally cleared up to NC State. It's 23 Davis with a clearance up towards Cowan. Cowan will hold up and wait for her fellow NC State teammates. Cowan starts and stops. Crossing pass. Deflected up. Carolina still under pressure. Looking to turn away from the goal. Cross here from Cowan. Headed on. And just wide. It's the header for NC State. More substitutes coming on for NC State here. It looks like Davis will be coming off. 
she will be replaced by number 12. When we're in Tomkey, I do believe. I am working with a makeshift roster here, so I do apologize for any mispronounced names or incorrect names. NC State to throw in. Flicked on twice by the Wolf Pack. Pressure by Cowan. And just cleared out by the Carolina defense. The same type of ball that Carolina NC State scored on earlier comes to Carter. Carter looking for a cross. Instead decides to shoot. And this one will be too tall even for the fence serving as a backstop to the field. It's a good run there by Carter. Like I said, that was the same type of play that NC State scored on earlier with the cross. Carter didn't feel as if she had enough time to find Cowan's feet or head for a cross. So I would take a uh, selfish shot right there. That's not a bad play, though. NC State hasn't got a quality look on goal in about five or five minutes, so it's not bad. Hesitation by the Carolina goalkeeper. Ball will be swung out towards midfield. Headed back by Carolina. Control there by Carter. Carter back to Bowen. And NC State's done a good job of getting themselves out of tight situations like the one that we just saw there. The defenders are giving nice support. That's number 21, Danielle Cooper. Cooper's done a good job of uh, supporting her fellow midfielders and defenders back there. Bowen to throw in. Carter back passes to Bowen. And NC State will look to break it out. Bowen to control. Carolina finally gains control, defended by Bolin. Chased down to the corner by NC State. It's number 17, Maggie Reef. Reef will send it out of bounds, and Carolina have a throw in. Quick throw in taken. Step of a move by the Tar Heels. A lot of touches. Crosses in the area of a blue jersey, but no one can get a touch on it, and NC State will look to break it out. NC State with the on of a little bit of a fast break here. Has Carter down the left-hand side. Instead decides to go back to Cowan. Cowan will chase it down in the corner. Looks like it'll be too long, though. And Carolina will go for another goal kick. Wasn't a bad thought there by number 20 for NC State. I do not have a 20 on my roster, so I cannot identify that player. However, it's not a bad pass, not a bad thought, rather. Um, it was the quality of the pass that was a little bit off there. Cowan was cutting back. She did have a lot of space, similar to the, the runs that Carter have been making. Carolina will send all some fresh legs. In a substitution. Carolina on the goal kick. Number eight will send it up towards midfield. A little bit of a knuckling ball there. So the wind is picked up a little bit. The wind is a little bit come and go. It does affect the, the temperature of the game, but not too much of, of the gameplay because we haven't seen too many long balls, too many lob passes. Most of the stuff has been close to the ground. 
Carter comes off for an NC State Wolfpack. Sent on for the left winger is going to be number 10, Parner. Pass sent out towards Parner. But Carolina would have intercepted it. Now is on the attack. NC State to break out. Squeezed out by the Carolina defense. Cross here from Carolina defense. Struggled to gain control as either side. Looks like the Carolina attacker took a dive a bit. And NC State survives the attack momentarily. NC State with some great one and two touch passes right there. Like we said before, Reef is back there in support. And it looks like NC State will switch the field. They've done that several times today. It's really contributed to these passes down in the corners where there's a lot of spaces once they get the ball up to the midfield. Reef with it again. She'll find Bowen. And then NC State will break out. Cowan controls. Number 20 in red. Controls it. Takes the space behind. Pass for Cowan is too long, but Carolina defender thought it better of it and just sent it out of play for an NC State corner kick. Crawford to take the corner kick for NC State. And it's a lot, of, a lot of standing around, a lot of static bodies in the box right now for both sides. See a couple of runs in, low ball, and knuckled away by the Carolina goalkeeper. And I do believe that's a second ball over, over the fence. So somebody will have to shag those in halftime session. You're in C State right now. You do want to move around a little bit. A standing body is easier to mark than a body in motion. Once again, the corner kick by Crawford is defended nicely by the Tar Heels. And then send it away for a goal kick. Carolina will send on two more substitutions. One substitution coming from either sides of the midfielder midfield wingers Carolina for the goal kick flicked on by NC State but controlled by Carolina errant touch there towards Cowan now Cowan can't turn around. Locates a Carolina to defend attacker rather. And the Tar Heels on the attack now. That ball was defended nicely by NC State defender number five, who also is not on my roster. Cross here swung in by UNC, but scooped up by Belfeld. Belfeld will push, push up her back line. Just drop kicks it away for Cowan. Carolina to control.
Pass intercepted by number 18 for NC State. Sent out a bounce for a Carolina throw in. Flicked on by the UNC Tar Heels. And once again, Carolina has not been too threatening with their attacks thus far. Really, the quality, the most quality chance they got came off a cross from the right side. All the attacks that Carolina has had from the left side not proved to be as fruitful. NC State controlling out in the form of Bolin, but Bolin loses it. Shot attempt, I do believe, by Carolina. That one was never going to bother Belfield. It looks to be as Carolina's attack originates from their center midfields, mid midfields to distribute to the wingers, kind of in the same fashion as NC State has done more successfully. I think you can attribute that to NC State's um, stellar center midfield defensive plays, and also the fact that NC State has seemed to string together more passes than Carolina has in this first half. Carolina on the attack, but an air pass sends the ball out of bounds for an NC State throw in. Number five to take the throw in. NC State loses the ball, but cleared out by Reef. Cowan on the breakout now. Long pass. Sent to no one in particular. And Carolina goalkeeper will control the ball. Stalling a bit. Finally picks it up. And as we close in on the half, presumably, uh, as we don't really have a, a game clock, the, the referee will keep an eye on the the time with his own stopwatch. As we close in on the half, it is really important for NC State to keep their mental focus. Don't allow any sloppy play. This is the first stoppage of play that we've had. Looks like there's an injury of some sort from NC State side. Can't tell what the number is. Our referee will to make sure that she's all right. It seems to be an ankle or some kind of lower leg injury. It looks to be number 10, Haley Parner. She will literally be carried off by one of her teammates. I didn't see what happened on that play, but it could be as simple as a cramp or a rolled ankle. It looks like it might be giving her some ice. So NC State will have to shorten the rotation a little bit with Carter, uh, excuse me, partner coming off and an offsides call. It's going to go against Carolina. That's the first offsides that we've seen from either side. Honestly, we haven't seen any fouls or any type of infractions from either side. So a very clean game played here today at Lower Method Field. Carolina now on the attack. Down the middle, a little bit of a confusion from the Carolina defense, but it was a very nice job by Belfield to come out on that play. She'll play it short to her center defender. That's a, that was a very good decision there by Belfield. Most of the time, 
as the referee will actually call half. We will go to a commercial break. Uh, this is Wolfpack Sports Television covering women's club soccer, UNC versus NC State. Our score after one half is 1-0. This has been Wolfpack Sports TV bringing you into the back. And welcome back to NC State Women's Club Soccer on Wolfpack Sports TV. This is the start of the second half of North Carolina State versus North Carolina. In the first half, in about the 10th minute, NC State netted one goal. Assisted by Carter, headed in by Henley. NC State took uh, the lead in the game and have started early in this half as well as a cross was sent in by number 14, Natalie McDonald, scooped up by the Carolina goalkeeper. NC State really had most of the momentum for the first half, controlled the ball for the most part, had possession for the most part, and Carolina's greatest opportunities came off of one corner and one cross, but really no shots on goal for Carolina thus far. NC State's goalkeeper, Anna Belfelv, has kept a clean, her and the NC State defenses have kept a clean sheet thus far. And NC State will look to net at least one more, if not two more goals to secure the win here in the second half. From a strategy standpoint, it looks like Carolina has fallen off their front line a bit. They're not pushing onto the back line of Reef and, excuse me, Reef and Davis. But this Reef and Davis combo has done a good job of controlling the ball out of the back, finding midfielders' feet, and the midfielders have done a pretty fair job of distributing crosses and, and through balls to their attacker. This one is McDonald on a cross here, controlled by the Carolina goalkeeper, but only scooped up before number 20 in red arrived to the scene. This ball cleared out towards the Carolina midfield, controlled by NC State, turned on, threw a ball to McDonald, she'll chase it down, sent away harmlessly by the Tar Heels defender. In the first half, we didn't see any penalties by either side. NC State had three corner kicks. Carolina only one corner kick. We did see an injury by NC State's striker. That was number 10. Haley Parner. So we shall see if she will come back on for the team in red. McDonald now for a crossing opportunity for NC State. She'll swing it in. It'll come off of a Carolina shin. And NC State will find their fourth corner kick of the afternoon. So be Penley Crawford to send in the corner kick for NC State. She lowers her hand, swings it in. This ball looks to be too high and too long, and that'll go out of bounds for a Carolina goal kick. Crawford delivery on her first attempts at a corner kick in the first half were much higher quality than that last one. Personally, I always think that a ball swung in a little bit lower is more dangerous. Uh, higher up, it's a more of a 50-50 ball. Uh, lower cross actually bothers the keeper a little more. Take a deflection off of a shin or, or a, 
a body and the ball's already in a dangerous area. Crawford long ball here, sent on towards McDonald. McDonald in a foot race with Carolina defender, but the ball curves in too much and it'll fall to the feet of the Carolina goalkeeper. Strategically, Carolina hasn't seemed to change their philosophy any from the first half, which benefits the NC State side. They, they showed them out in the first half. And as an old coach of mine used to say at, a, at his halftime speech, oh, a quality opportunity here by Crawford. She can't find the final shot. Carolina will clear it out for now. And to finish my thought, an old coach of mine used to say, during halftime speeches when we were leading. If we score more than they do in this half, I think we have a pretty good chance of winning. So NC State will look to implement that philosophy here this afternoon as well. One-two touch passing from NC State. Finally intercepted by Carolina. Squeezed out there by Reef, and NC State will go back on the attack. NC State to throw it in. Hop step and thrown down the sideline. There's Bowling. Reef will look to clear. NC State squeezes us out that opportunity. And it'll be back and forth play here by both sides. Carolina takes a quick throw in. But the cross is deflected out of bounds. And Carolina still without any opportunities towards net. NC State has committed a lot of defenders towards that right side. Finally, a cross goes towards the right side. A shot was rising above Belfield, but it was still too high, and the ball was let out of play. That was probably the best opportunity we've seen for Carolina thus far. If that ball had gone in, I think NC State would have just had to tip their cap to the Tar Heels as that shot was about 35 yards out. Have to have been placed perfectly. And there's really nothing Belfield could have done at that point. This ball comes out to Carter on the left side. Look, Carter takes two touches, swings it in towards number 20 for NC State. She can't get a one-time shot on the ball. And Carolina will look to clear it out and regroup. Carter to throw in. Turned away by Carolina. And the Tar Heels still cannot clear the ball out clearly. Headed on there by number 14. That's McDonald for NC State. A little bit too far out. Not enough power on it. And NC State will look to regain control here. Carolina to control. Pass too long for the Carolina attacker. She'll pressure the second ball. Bowling does a good job of turning on it, sending away the Carolina attack. From a strategy standpoint, Carolina has really shot themselves in a the foot. Most of the time when the defenders look to clear out the ball, they'll just kind of lob it high and wide, which is a good philosophy some of the time, but most of the time NC State regains control and Carolina just finds themselves clearing and re-clearing and having NC State come right back down where they just defended the ball from before. So a little bit of a battle of attrition for Carolina. 
they look to see themselves on a fast break, but the referee says no. Handball. See State will hold up for a second. As the player was tying her shoe and we've restarted play now. Cooper plays catch with Reef in the backfield. And C State moves it along towards the left side. Carter Carter finds number 20 in red. She'll make a run down the left side. Physical play there. Jockeying back in fourth position, but Ball played out of bounds by Carolina, and NC State will be back on a throw in. Just an estimation, but it does seem like NC State has had the ball on their attacking third about uh, 40, 40 to 45% of the time. That really wears down the Carolina defense. And when you have to have substitutes coming on and off and and uh, tired legs out there, eventually NC State will look to find uh, a, a, a shot or a quality opportunity to not necessarily put this one away. Obviously, Carolina can score on some fast break opportunities and some, some uh, breakaways, but... For the most part, NC State looks to net another one. They'll have complete control over this game. You can see Tar Heel snuff out that attack for the Wolf Pack. They'll look to break it out themselves. A Maradona move there by the Carolina center midfield. Pass up towards the attack. Physical play there by Cowan, I think that was, to pickpocket the center midfielder in blue. And NC State will bring on some substitutions here, as well as Carolina. Like I said, NC State looks to have a little bit of a deeper bench than Carolina does. Carolina only has, working with three substitutions here. And then tournament play in club soccer there is no cap on how many substitutions you can have like unlike professional sports where you are limited to three A shot here by Carolina along the near sideline off the mark and NC State will go for a goal kick Belfield clears it out towards the near sideline headed on by their Number 34, left winger for in blue. McDonald, one touch pass is broken up by the Carolina defender. Overlapping run here by the Carolina attacker. Cross and a shot on goal, and that'll go in. And just like that, Carolina has equalized. So after NC State has dominated play through the first two thirds of this game, Carolina has equalized. And NC State finds himself knotted up with about 20 minutes to play in the second half. This ball falls out of bounds off of number 31 in blue. See State to take the throw in. McDonald touches it along towards number nine in red. She looks for a square pass, but couldn't find any feet. Crawford now with it. Square pass to number 12 in red. Davis.
NC State will make a substitution for their lone striker. Number 20 will come off and make way for a fresher player. That player will be number seven, Logan Hurley. Hurley, Hurley had several quality chances in the first half. Her and Carter worked well along the left sideline. Penalty there by NC State is waved off. Advantage given to Carolina, but NC State regains possession. Davis's pass is broken up. Carolina will play back and forth. Ping pong passes between NC State. No one really wants to gain possession of it. Kept in here by Carolina. Reef sends it along to Bolin. Bolin sends it up towards Carter. Carter decides to reset and sends it all the way back to Reef. Reef looked to exploit the high line that Carolina's playing with the long lob pass. Pass couldn't find its way through. And Reef will look to reset. Bolin. Crawford pushed off the ball, but physical play allows them to play on. Long pass towards McDonald's feet. However, the pass cannot find McDonald's control. And Carolina will look to reset. Keeper clears their lines. Lift there by Davis. Reef sends it towards the near side to McDonald. McDonald turns on it. Two touches, comes off of a Carolina foot. But the referee decides it'll be a blue throw in. Davis controls the throw in by Carolina. Sends it towards the back line. Davis intercepts the pass, and a penalty is called by the referee. A little bit more physical play we've seen here in the second half than the first half. Still by no means a, a dirty play by the Carolina attacker. She was making a play on the ball. Just happens to get her feet caught up. Carolina does a good job of squeezing out that attack right there. Number five for NC State. You really didn't have any support by her fellow teammates. McDonald now. Sends it up towards Hurley. Hurley will chase this one down. An in-between pass. And that was a dangerous ball there to Carolina to play. And Hurley was running onto it. That ball could have easily taken a deflection. And uh, as I just saw, and I... Swedish national game uh, it could have been a beneficial bounce like the one that came off of Zlatan Ibrahimovic's head the other day so you never know when you play the ball like that back what's really going to happen Crawford McDonald now cross low Crawford to shoot and scooped up there by the Carolina keeper. It's about her fourth save today. But a very good passing there by NC State. Davis looks to move it up. Moves it out to the close side. Crawford. To Davis. Through ball to Hurley, can't find its way through. And NC State will lose the possession momentarily. Squeezed out there by Crawford, though. She moves it up 
towards McDonald. McDonald will wait for support. She looks to turn on it. Touched out of bounds by number 31 in blue. And she stay, finds herself in a throw in. Bit of an illegal throw in there by NC State. Her, the thrower's foot was on the line. It's not exactly allowed. Nonetheless, we'll play on. Bowling. A shot. And easily chested down and scooped up by the Carolina keeper. Not a quality look there by number 12 in red. That's Lauren Tompkin. Tompke, excuse me. Davis to Tompke here. Davis to Hurley. Hurley runs onto it. And once again, Carolina one touch away from NC State being in on goal. Carter to throw in. Bowling swings it around. Direct pass towards Hurley. Was head high, but nobody could control. And once again, Carolina goalkeeper makes an easy scoop on the ball. might be an injury there to the Carolina left center back. The referee called time. She looks like she's going to be sent off. Some kind of treatment. Keep an eye on that. It looks like the trainer's gone over to See what the matter is with her. We still haven't seen the return of number 10, Haley Parner for NC State. She was sent off with a lower leg injury in the first half. Her status is still questionable for the second game if she doesn't return against Carolina. Later game today against Duke will be on the same field. At about 2 o'clock, the game time of this first game was 10 o'clock. And those were unfamiliar with the tournament styles, pretty much you just have to wait around until your next game in the afternoon, go grab a quick bite to eat. You have to stay loose. Most of the time you will see cramps and injuries because of... Um, Stiff muscles. NC State working on finishing off this first game, though. They, they would, did find themselves with an early lead, and Hurley looks to have an opportunity for the NC State to go by one again. Carolina equalized at approximately the halfway mark of the second half. Crawford to throw in. Full extension on the throw. Very cross like, but NC State can't find a finishing touch. Carolina will scoop it up once again. It does seem like NC State deserves another goal. If they can find that goal. Carolina now on the attack. Ooh, and hard foul there by the Carolina defender. It didn't look like there was any attempt there. However, she was brought down by, from behind. And that's a pretty easy call there for the man in green. Cooper would take the free kick for NC State. Cooper to reset.
Reef to Tomke. Tomke to the left wing. That pickpocketed away by the Carolina defense. Hurley overruns this one, and Carolina will look to lob pass it forward. That will fall off of Boland's head. Out of play for a Carolina throw in. So possibly the final substitutions here by both sides. We are in the waning moments of the second half. Probably less than 10 minutes remaining for us to get a winner. And this is round robin style um, play in tournaments. So NC State will have one more game at least. They can earn up to three points by Gaining a goal here and, and getting a, a win against Carolina. If not, they will split points against Carolina and only have one point. Carolina will have one point. But right now, these women are focused on scoring another goal, and getting a win here against Carolina. Yarbrough's pass intercepted by Carolina, and Carolina looks to catch NC State on a counterattack. Cooper having none of it, sends the ball away. All right. The Tar Heels squander that opportunity and send it all the way back to Belfeld. Bowling to move up towards Carter. Looks like she almost ran into the scores table over there. NC State really hasn't done a good enough job of, qual of moving it through their midfield like they did in the first half and the early parts of this second half. Carolina has done a better job of closing out that space and not allowing the NC State midfielders to turn and distribute. However, NC State has shown that they can do that and still has a strong possibility of, of doing that yet still. Opportunity here for Cowan. The Carolina goalkeeper sends it away. With Cowan bearing down on her. Yarbrough to throw it in. Sent in towards 20 in red. Crawford chases it down. NC State can't control. Carolina now on the counterattack. 1-2 passes by Carolina, finding down the middle of the NC State defense. Finally shut down by Bolin, and Davis will look to play it up. Crawford now deeks by her defender. Finds Carter on the left side. Carter will lose it on a turnover to the Carolina Tar Heels. Carter once again. Reef a long square pass to number five in red. NC State on a long ball. Cowan to chase this one down. And the Carolina goalkeeper will just pick it up. Crawford to control. Falls right to a Carolina midfielder. His feet. feet. Crawford moving it up now. She has numbers. Four on five. Can't find a quality pass. And NC State will lose the possession. 20 in red takes away from the Tar Heel defense. She'll send it down straight down the line. This one will bounce towards the corner. Running on by Cowan, but sent away by the Carolina defense. Yarborough to take the throw in. NC State will look to have a scoring opportunity off of a, essentially a, a cross. Yarborough with the long throw in. Nobody in the air. 
but NC State controls it down. Crawford shot on goal. That ball is rising, but Crawford with a quality opportunity still not able to find the back of the net. NC State has committed a lot of attackers to that attack, but somehow breaks down the counterattack by the Tar Heels. However, the Tar Heels are back on the attack now. A through ball to the Carolina winger and a cross there by the Tar Heels. Can't find anyone in blue. And Belfield will scoop it up and look to clear a line. So this ball slicing towards the near side. Touchdown by the midfielder in blue. Moved on towards Davis. Bowen to Carter. Carter back to Bowen. Bowen will look to move it up. Cowan moves back. Gets a pass there. And now it's Yarbar. Yarbar one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And just a step behind of where the ball was. If not, she could have taken a touch and had a chance for a 1v1 with the Carolina goalkeeper. NC State throwing bodies towards the ball now. Good shut down there by number five in red. Once again, well defended. And good recovery there by five. Yarbar to move it up towards Cowan. Cowan one on one with the keeper now. Carolina regroups and takes a deflection. And NC State still with an opportunity to regain control. Yarbar pressures. And that ball just nutmegging Yarborough. Carolina a bit disoriented here. Can't cleanly clear the ball out, which they had done a better job here in the second half than they did in the first. More able to control it when they move it out from their defending third. Carolina on the counterattack now. About two on six. Carolina definitely not with numbers. So NC State able to regain control. They'll move it out towards Cowan's feet. Cowan loses it momentarily. Jockeying for the ball. NC State looks to regain control. And Eric Touch will just come out of bounds for a throw in and believe that was. Very lucky that that didn't go out for a corner kick for Carolina. Otherwise, the Tar Heels would have been immediately set up for a scoring opportunity late in the second half. The game still knotted at 1-1. Throw and taken by the Tar Heels. She'll turn, and the serve on the far side is able to see that that ball goes out of bounds. Belfield. Takes the goal kick. Low pass towards her defender. She'll play it back towards Cooper. Cooper sends a long ball out to her. Cowan. Cowan puts pressure on the Carolina back line. And they'll just send it away for a throw in. Yarborough to take the throw in. Long throw in. Back towards Crawford. Crawford gets a bounce. Her back to the goal, trying to turn. Well, that's a tough pass there by Crawford. Trying to play it to where your back is turned. She needs to have support players back there so she can play it off of them. Square up. And then play it. Looks like the referee on the far sideline has caught a foul on NC State there. But the center judge not seeing it or disagreeing with the call. Allows them to play on. And really, we've only seen about three penalties from both sides combined in this game. Cowan pressuring the back line of the Carolina defense. 
This ball will deflect off of an NC State hip and go out for a blue throw in. A lob throw in will be the last play of the game, and NC State is unable to get a win here in the first game of their head, uh, excuse me, back to back game against Duke and Carolina. NC State will tie after a Carolina equalizer and a, about the two thirds way mark of the of the game after they had gained most of the momentum and control throughout the game. So for the rest of our crew in the first game of this head-to-head -head series against Duke and Carolina, women's soccer club uh, club soccer team uh, draws against the UNC Tar Heels. This has been an installment of Wolfpack Sports TV bringing you into the back. <laughs>